So I recently hit 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube and in this video I'll be talking about what that's like, where I've been for the past few months and what my plans are for 2022. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Anton Wong and well, I'm here to unleash the power of video. So if that interests you, stick around. First off, over 1,000 of you guys hit subscribe. I know people may have just been too lazy to unsubscribe or maybe they forgot that they were subscribed or they just don't use YouTube all that often or they're still deciding whether they want to stick around or not. But you know, that's to be expected. I don't blame them, that's okay. I do that with other channels as well. But to all those who are actually watching these videos and liking them, commenting on them, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me and making YouTube video creation an enjoyable experience. I seriously could not have done it without you guys. I wouldn't have been able to reach a thousand subscribers without you. Um, because without you clicking that little red button of subscribe, then I, can, I can't subscribe to myself a thousand times. I've tried, it doesn't work. But with that out of the way, 2021. Huh, what a, <laughs> what a year, right? In the greater world, am I right? Uh. But a little bit more selfishly in my own life, I started off this year by releasing a video about my reflection on my year of 2020 and my plans for 2021. So I figured I'd do the same thing this year. Let's actually start with last year's video itself. Uh, I had actually taken the opportunity to collaborate with a few other video creators and ask them for their plans for, you know, their New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals or what have you. I did this for a few reasons. First, I wanted to feel a little bit less alone making these videos as it can sometimes feel a little bit lonely being a video creator unless you're doing it as a duo or as a team. Second, I think that making a video about our goals and plans might actually help hold us to account or at least serve as like a time capsule of sorts about what we were thinking of the time. And third, I was just kind of curious to know what their plans were. It seems as though we've all made plans to make videos on a more consistent basis and if you are a content creator or have ever set a New Year's goal of any some sort, you'll know that most of us didn't reach our grandest ambitions, or at least I certainly did not. One of the goals, or at least plans, that I made in the video was to make more YouTube videos. Of course, specifically more searchable content. What happened? Um, well, let's get into that. In terms of making searchable content, I did actually make some good on that plan, sort of, at least at the beginning of the year, by making searchable videos about Anchor.fm and Vado Elements, as well as some gear. I also ended up making videos, uh, sort of story-based content, uh, with videos about how I tried remaking YouTuber thumbnails, and how I tried shooting dozens of stock footage clips in a day, and how I tried switching to DaVinci Resolve 17 for 30 days, which is a combination of sort of story-based content or like challenge-based video, uh, as well as searchable content. That video was released in February and was actually one of my highest viewed videos of all time on this channel, apart from the YouTube versus Vimeo comparison video. Now, I got a lot of flack from those comments a little bit, uh, just by virtue of it being a video where I didn't do things correctly on people's favorite uh, editing software uh, and, you know, other people may have used the software in a different way. But it still ended up being a very well-performing video nonetheless, and it ended up getting me a lot of new subscribers. And in terms of collaborating, I didn't do as much collaboration as I had hoped, but I did end up collaborating once again with my friend Avery from Avery Talks About Stuff. I even brought her on for a live stream where I uh, tried live streaming a few times. So why am I so hesitant when talking about these goals? Well, because I sort of stopped making videos and had ended up also putting the podcast that I had on hold uh, back in May. You see, a big life moment happened in that time. I got a full-time job. I got a job working as a sort of coordinator uh, at a company doing live streams and such. Uh, that job ended up being a full-time thing that would uh, sometimes even go into overtime hours and just be a little bit overwhelming for me to even think of making videos. And of course I had the summer where things were kind of slowing down, but uh, you know, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Maybe I just lost the motivation or something. I ended up cranking out like two more videos since then, uh, my birthday video and my follow-up to the DaVinci Resolve 17 video. But basically from May to December, 2021, I didn't really upload many YouTube videos. And that was 
something that kind of disappoints me. Now the job I started working itself was great. Uh, I started learning lots of new things. I learned new things about live streaming on, on you know different systems like vMix. I also started learning more things about creating graphics for live streams like lower thirds motion graphics. That actually helped accelerate my growth of trying to learn After Effects or at least the motion graphics side of After Effects. Of course, I also got the chance to grow my planning and communication skills since that was most of what the job entailed. I learned about how to communicate with clients and diffuse situations as well as how to quickly solve them. I learned about things regarding WordPress as well as a little bit of development, mostly just kind of like WordPress things the way that they had them set up. But overall, I just learned so many things on this job. So why is it that I am still a little bit upset? You see, the job itself, like I mentioned, had me doing different things and learning things that I didn't know beforehand and actually lacked the skills and, and was able to gain those skills and improve upon those skills. But it didn't improve upon the things that I had originally set out to improve upon. And what were those things that I had mentioned in that last video? Well, in that last video, I said that I want to improve upon color grading, visual effects, digital ad planning, sales, and time management. I certainly did learn time management through schedule coordination and deadline adherence, you know, that kind of being the basis of my full-time job. And in terms of sales, I did learn some skills related to inside sales and upselling clients on different features. In terms of color grading, I really did put this off. Uh, I obviously did a dive into the industry standard color grading software with DaVinci Resolve, but I mostly learned the non-linear editing portion of that software, like the edit tab. I didn't invest much time into the color aspect of that or the fusion effects tab of the application, which is where like visual effects, that plan where I, that goal, I sort of, I guess sort of picked up on it. I mean, I tried learning fusion a little bit, but just the nodes was so complicated to wrap my head around. So I ended up turning back to old faithful After Effects. Now I've used After Effects before back in college and I've used it on a project per project basis since then, but I haven't gotten my hands really dirty with it, at least not frequently since graduating, which is where it was actually helpful that my job actually had me taking on the assembly of those sort of motion graphics lower third templates in After Effects. So I was already reintroduced to the software in my job and followed many beginner tutorials on how to do basic things like using track mats and changing the keyframe animations in the graph editor. And I mean, things that I'd learned back in college, which I had to refresh myself on. I guess I'm making slow progress on that goal of visual effects, at least in the motion graphics department. And in terms of digital ad planning, I barely looked into that. I mean, that was just me looking into different areas of digital media and thinking about where my career was headed. Um, made me thinking about going that direction before I ended up getting the job that I did. I also mentioned that I want to create digital assets like templates and stock footage and courses to sell online back in that last video. I think it was just kind of looking for ways to make money as opposed to having something that I was going to be excited to share. Like how I made some designs on Redbubble, which netted a total of like $50 last year. It wasn't very much, but I'm actually having to start to have some excitement for making some digital assets uh, for sale, but I'll get to that in just a moment. I did mention that as one of my goals, making more story-based content and even documentary style things, which is something that I didn't do really that much of, but it's not something that I'm giving up on this coming year. I am actually quite possibly headed towards that direction in new job this year. Oh right, I forgot to mention that I'm leaving my current job to get back into the career of video production. I appreciate the time that I spent, you know, like I definitely enjoyed all the skills that I've learned and people that I've worked with, but it's just time to get back into making video production, which is the thing that brings me joy. And that brings me to my plans for 2022. Oh boy. Uh, making sweeping plans that uh, I know may or may not be able to accomplish. I, yeah, like I said in that last video, circumstances can definitely change. So what I'm gonna do instead is since I benefit quite a bit from these sort of challenge type videos where I set out a certain amount of work uh, for a certain time period, I think that's what I'll do. Uh, I'll set three quote unquote smart goals for the first half of 2022. Smart meaning specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time sensitive. If you guys want, you can comment with your smart goals or smart goals down below and keep yourself accountable. Anyway, here are mine for the first six months of 2022. I want to spend 100 hours before July uh, learning new things in After Effects and come out with at least 10 animation sequences that I've made that are at least 10 seconds long. Number two, I want to follow 30 DaVinci Resolve tutorials before April 1st, so the first quarter of this year. And third, I want to upload at least 15 videos on this channel by July, which is a little bit more than once every other week. I think setting more goals than that will be 
pretty hard to track and possibly overwhelming so I feel confident about them and you know I'll check back in July or you know later on in the year to tell you the, the progress of, of those goals and by that time I'll probably have new goals that I'll have maybe specifically pertaining to making digital content you know digital assets to sell like courses or templates or anything like that and starting production on a short film or something like that but that's for the second half of the year. I'll probably make some challenge type videos about them too and if you'd actually like to see one of my challenge type videos you can click over here to see a playlist of them but apart from that thank you all so much for watching especially the ones that have stuck around after my months of no videos and I just would not be able to do this without you guys to get to a thousand subscribers. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Bye.